Hey Toy Fans, Aaron here. Today, taking a look at Boba Fett from the Star Wars Mandalorian Retro Collection. This wave of figures was released in spring of 22, and we'll take a quick look at the card where there's really no surprises here. The line is done to give you the vintage-inspired look of the line as it was in the 70s and 80s, and as they have done with the Retro Collection, they give you the white-worn edges around the uh, sides of the card. And you get that large orange Retro Collection sticker, as if you need any other uh, notification to tell you that this is not, you know, an original release. Otherwise, everything looks like you would expect. Along the top, you got the Star Wars Mandalorian logo, Boba Fett, along with the uh, parentheses of Morak. This is where the world that he's on. Character image in the background looks fantastic. Unfortunately, a lot of it covered up with that orange sticker, but things still look great. And, of course, through the blister, you got a good look at your included action figure. Here's a quick look on the back side of the card where there's no surprises here for the Retro Collection line. Top third talks about this particular line being inspired by the figures from the 70s. Small slice through the middle in that orange part that lists out the six figures that are available in this particular uh, wave of figures. And the bottom portion of the card is your legal information. Taking a look at the figure out of the packaging, and for me, I think this is just a beautiful looking figure. I've said it before, and I'll continue to say it, that for me, the Retro Collection line is uh, just something I really love. These were the figures or type of figures I played with as a kid, and even though now we're getting the new properties released in this line, I love seeing that inspired look of how they may have been done back in the 70s and 80s. Overall, Boba Fett's costume is rather simple and a very simple paint scheme, so this one's probably a pretty easy one to pull off and make it look good. Looking in on the head sculpt, I think overall for trying to achieve a vintage retro look, things are definitely looking great. On the right side of his helmet, you see they do have the antenna sculpted in. Obviously, it's probably a little shorter than it should be, and it is attached, but that is what they did back in the 80s for the Boba Fett figure. Sculpting looks great, very identifiable as being Boba Fett's helmet. The burgundy along the front edges of the visor looks fantastic. Nice touches of black painting along the cheek of that helmet, and then the base color of that green looking good. And naturally, you even have the little indent for the dent in his helmet. So it spins around to the backside. You got a little T-section of burgundy painted in. Some vents or something done. Uh, ridges sculpted into the backside of the helmet. So nice little added touch of detail there. And obviously, as uh, you'd probably expect for a retro figure, the helmet is not removable. I'm quite all right with that. Just kind of pointing it out. Getting to the chest and arms of the figure where things are still looking really good. Overall, the coloring for the base part of his costume is done in a very deep brown color. Same through the legs. I will say that's probably a little bit of a miss considering that I believe his robes in the show, at least as it looks on the front of the card, was all black. But it would be really kind of the only critique of the figure I would have. One could probably twist my arm and say that the green is probably too deep of a green color. Should be a little bit lighter. But that doesn't bug me one bit. Otherwise, through the arms, you've got some yellow painted in for the armor on the top of the shoulder and red gauntlets painted on each wrist. Sculpting for those gauntlets looks pretty decent, pretty much in line with the way that each one looked in the show. Obviously, you're not getting a ton of sculpting detail as you would for the vintage line. And I'm quite all right with that because that's not what this figure needs to be. And then through the chest, of course, you have the traditional Boba Fett armor pieces sculpted in there, raised just ever so slightly from his undersuit. And that green painting matches up quite well with the painting or the coloring of the plastic on the top of the head. Between the neck and chest of the figure, you can see some of his back robes or something are sculpted in. A little scarf type look around the neck. Nice little layer design sculpted in. Definitely giving some dimension to those bits of plastic. As you get around to the back side of the figure, Boba Fett wouldn't be himself without his rocket. And you're getting that sculpted in here. To point out, just as that original 80s figure released, this is a non-functioning rocket, all done in the same simple green color and some relatively decent detail sculpted in. Around the waist, you got a nice brown utility belt sculpted in, painting for that to my eyes that are getting much older, it seems, as I just had to get bifocals. Uh, but that painting is staying uh, pretty much where it needs to be, it seems. I'm not noticing anything that's running off. On his right hip, you got a brown holster sculpted in, little loop to that. I'll show that off later. You can slide the handle of his included blasters in through there to help hold them in place. And then those robe pieces that covered his legs here also has a pretty nice sculpting to it. Very nice drape effect being done. And then you get around to what I assume would be the armor on the bottom of his kneecap. Uh, sculpted quite low, I would say, if that's where it's supposed to be, since it's sitting more at the top of his boots. But nice bright yellow painting, also matching up well to the top of the shoulders. A little bit of overspray, especially on the one that's on his left leg along the bottom there. Pretty minor nitpick there, and that's something that's definitely going to vary from figure to figure. And then 
the rest of it. Obviously, you got his boots sculpted in, decent detailing and coloring still seems to match up well with the rest of the figure, which it should since it's probably just the yellow that's painted in. So for the articulation, head swivels a full 360. You got the same movement for each of the arms and then both legs come straight out and only a little bit back. As for accessories, he does come with two blasters. Unlike the 80s release, this time we are getting the iconic Boba Fett rifle. Pretty decent sculpting to it. Once again, I'll just keep reminding, this is the retro line, so you're not going to get the highly detailed or additional paint applications being done as you would for today's vintage line. So as these were done back in the 80s, 70s, and 80s, this matches up very well. He holds it well in his hand, and same thing for the tiny blaster that he comes with. Decent sculpting to it. You can make out the barrel at the end and the tip. You know, not much to say to these. Both black plastic, and then as I mentioned, you can slide the handle of the blaster through that loop of his holster on his leg. So not quite like the traditional functioning holster we get nowadays, but it's something that does work and gives you a place to put a weapon. So overall for me, I mean obviously, I love this figure. I love the retro collection line and what they're doing with it and that they're bringing out figures from the newer properties and giving them that retro look. All this really does for me though is increase my desire to have them release those original, what, 96 figures into the line because I'd love to build this out and have all brand new looking figures. Uh, but this guy, really well done. I love how the colors just pop on it. And clearly, as you can see here, he fits in quite well with the other figures in the retro collection line. So that's going to wrap this one up. As always, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this figure in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.